continue with the third section of the book of Revelation, this special and unique book that has a divine outline and a special blessing to those who read, to those who hear, and those who keep the words of this prophecy. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Now, we all know that Apostle John, Prophet John, Pastor John, he was overseeing all these seven churches. He was on the island of Patmos around 95-96 AD when he wrote the book of Revelation and he wrote to a group that was persecuting. They were fed to the lions. They were crucified upside down. They were burned at the stake. They were dipped in hot wax. They were ignited as candles in Caesar's garden. So he wrote to this group of people to encourage them and to strengthen them and to tell them that Jesus is coming back. And he's coming soon. And he's going to bring judgment on those who persecuted them. On those who rejected Christ. Now, based on the divine outline, and we all know the divine outline is in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 19. When uh, the Lord Jesus tells John, write the things that you have seen. The resurrected glorified Christ and the things which are church age all those churches church age in its entirety and then the things which will take place after this and these are future events chapter 4 to 22 future events like rapture harpazo raptus in in latin uh Great Tribulation, where we are right now, we are studying the Great Tribulation. The second coming, millennium, and then the new heaven and a new earth. Now, based on the divine outline and based on the fact that the book of Revelation is written in chronological order, we all understand that the catching away of the saints or the rapture takes place before the great tribulation and we studied that in chapter 4 and 5 now if we do not follow the divine outline that you see on the screen if we don't follow that if we ignore that then uh, the book of revelation becomes very hard to understand even confusing but we here at living water church we choose to follow the divine outline so we can understand the book of Revelation. Now, someone may say, even when we follow the divine outline, you know, when we look around, when we hear the news, when we look at our society, at our culture, it seems that the enemy is constantly winning. Well, we go to the Bible, in the book of Galatians, chapter six, verse seven. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he shall also reap. In the book of Revelation, we will see that Satan is not winning. In fact, he's heading toward destruction. He's heading toward the lake of fire. Not only that. But he knows that he has just a little time left. And because he knows that, he will increase his tactics. And he will increase his schemes and his strategies, his games. So this is what we see in our culture today. Do not be deceived. Now we all know that God is directing human history He's in control. He's on the throne. He has the last words, not Satan. And God will establish 
his righteousness and his judgment in his perfect time and perfect schedule. Not our time, his perfect time. Only God knows. Now, at the beginning of human history, God gave Adam a perfect planet, a perfect earth, and he said, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth, have dominion over everything that, that moves on the earth. You know that, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. So, in other words, God gave Adam the title deed of the earth. We all know that Adam sinned and he turned the planet over to Satan. That's why Jesus calls Satan the prince of this world or the ruler of this world. John chapter 12 verse 31. Also Paul calls Satan the god of this age. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In other words, Satan now has the title deed of the earth. Now, in the book of Revelation, Jesus comes to take back the title deed of the earth from Satan. How? By opening the scroll. I just want you to picture a scroll. Remember, that scroll was written on both sides. So it was perfect, it was complete. So Jesus, by opening the scroll and by opening those seven seals, one by one, he brings judgment on earth. He purges the earth. He takes ownership of the earth or he takes the title deed back. Why? So he can establish his kingdom. He can set up his kingdom, millennium and chapter 20, when we are going to rule with the Lord Jesus for a thousand years. He's going to show us how he intended for us to live and subdue the earth. Amazing. It will be a time of peace, prosperity, and plenty. We cannot wait to rule with the Lord. And we know in that time, Satan will be bound for that 1,000 years. To refresh our memory, in the book of Revelation chapter 5, the Father is seen holding the scroll with the seven seals. He's holding the scroll. The scroll contains the records of judgment that must take place on the earth on those who rejected Christ. And the strong angel is asking, who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And the Bible said in Revelation chapter 5 verse 3 that no one in heaven or earth or under the earth was worthy, not willing, worthy to open the scroll. And Apostle John he started to cry. He was crying and sobbing because he realized that Jesus cannot set up his kingdom until the scroll is open and the judgments are released, until the wrongs of the earth are judged and punished, until the righteous are vindicated, until the earth is purged. Purging the earth needs to take place in order for the Lord to set up his kingdom. And that means purging, cleaning up the mess, purification, and it will take the Lord seven years to do that. Seven years because the tribulation, the great tribulation is a seven time period, seven years. Um, the Lord will purge the earth. By purging the earth, how does the Lord do that? Opening the seven seals, not only the seals, but the trumpets and the bows. If you remember, we discussed that in the book of Revelation, we have three sets of judgments. Three sets of judgments. The seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the bows 
judgments. We have seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. The judgments will increase in intensity. That means they will become more severe. From the seals to the trumpets to the bowls, the judgments will increase in power, in strength, in magnitude, in intensity. Now in Revelation chapter six, if you remember, Jesus opens those seven, uh, six seals. In chapter six, he opens six seals. The first seal, the Antichrist appears on the scene on a white horse. Second seal, very quickly, uh, the red horse speaks of war. The third seal, the black horse that speaks of famine. Always after war, what's next? Famine. And then we have the pale horse that speaks of plagues and destruction and pestilence. Then we have the fifth seal that speaks of those who died for their faith in the middle of the tribulation. Even in the time of tribulation, people will accept the Lord. His grace is amazing. Amen. And But they are dying. They are be, most of them will be beheaded, the book of Revelation tells us. So uh, the, the fifth seal speaks of those who died for their faith. And they are crying out to the Lord saying, avenge us, avenge our blood. And then we have the sixth seal. Uh, we learn that a great earthquake uh, will affect the whole world. And that's Revelation chapter 6. Then in Revelation chapter 7, the judgments stop. We don't have, the Lord Jesus doesn't open the seventh seal in the book of Revelation chapter 7. No, we have a break there. We discussed that in our last lesson. Uh, just th those judgments they stop for, for a short period of time and in that chapter chapter 7 two important groups are there the sealed Jews 144 uh, Jews will evangelize and then the saved Gentiles those who are saved during the tribulation remember church is in heaven now if you need more details on that, you go on YouTube and you go to Living Water Church Palm Springs because we really don't have time to go in details. We just, I just want to refresh our memory. <coughs> now, we all know that right now we are in the age of grace, of dispensation of grace. And the Gentiles, which are all the people that are not Jews in the Bible, are called Gentiles. We are commissioned to preach the gospel, to reach those around us, to share the good news, the message of salvation, because Jesus is coming soon. But in the time of great tribulation, 144,000 Jews, according to Revelation chapter seven, they are sealed and they are called to evangelize, not only the Jews, but the, the whole earth. And these Jews, are protected by God. Nothing can harm them. <laughs> Nothing can hurt them. They are protected by God. So you see, God is not done with the Jews. He loves the Jews. Now, we go to our chapter, the book of Revelation chapter eight, and we are going to read the chapter, and then we are going to discuss. In chapter 8, and Jerry is going to put that on the screen, we see here that first Jesus opens the seventh seal. Number one, Jesus opens the seventh seal, and we are going to read. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Verse 2. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Verse 4. 
and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Verse 5, we go in Revelation. Uh, then the angel took the censer, filled, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Verse 6. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Verse 7. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And the third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, burning with fire, was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Verse 9, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Verse 11, the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. Verse 13. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So, in this chapter, Jesus opens the seventh seal, the final, final seal, and this seventh seal will announce 30 minutes silence in heaven. This seventh seal will also introduce the seven trumpets, the seven trumpet judgments. Now, we read in verse 1, Revelation chapter Eight, verse 1 that when Jesus opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about half an hour so this, this seventh seal speaks of silence perfect peace now we know that in heaven there is no time and that's why many Bible scholars believe that this silence in heaven is a mystery Probably it is a mystery. Um, now, in the seminary, people were making jokes and they said, well, the silence in heaven indicates that there are no women in heaven. Well, we don't believe that. Of course, you know, silence in heaven. But I believe and I say, my opinion, I can be wrong. I believe I believe um, that silence in heaven is related to prayer because we link verse 1 with verse 3. And what I believe in my heart is that this silence in heaven, as I said, is related to the prayer of the tribulation saints, not us, we are in heaven, the prayer of the tribulation saints. Now remember, in heaven, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, thousands of angels, they are around the throne praising and worshiping the Lord. And they are saying, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Now in those 30 minutes, in that moment of time, God is saying, I desire complete silence. His total attention, his complete attention 
is on the prayer of the tribulation saints. And what is their prayer? The book of Revelation tells us in chapter 6 verse 10, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood? How long, O Lord, until you avenge us and our blood? When we hear this prayer, we believe that it is a selfish prayer. It is not a selfish prayer. It is a prayer for justice. So God is fixing his full attention on those tribulation saints who are praying. You see, God is so in love with those people, even though they rejected him previously, but he's so in love with those tribulation saints, just like he's so in love with us, that he is fixing his full attention on their prayers. No, if you think of just like in real life, so many people are spending thousands of dollars uh, to um, just wait for counselor or psychiatrist. They want somebody to listen to them. But our Almighty God, our Abba Father, gives us His total attention, His complete attention when we pray and when those tribulation saints pray. The key, as Pastor George was saying, the key. The key is simple. Pray, pray, pray. Just like, think about two people in a restaurant, in a corner there. They are fully in love. They are deeply in love. They don't care about noise. They don't care about cry, crowds. They don't care <laughs> that the food is late. A riot can take place. They don't hear. They only hear each other because they are focused on each other. They love each other deeply. They are saying, oh, it's the first time when somebody can understand me and can hear me. Now, sad to say, after a few years of marriage, that can change. Sad to say. <laughs> so just like that, those people in the restaurant, fully in love, they are so focused on each other, they don't hear anything around. Just like that, God is fixing his full attention on those who are praying. And I'm talking about tribulation saints, but also about us today. He listens to our prayer. Now in verse 2, we see the seven angels with seven trumpets. But now we are going to go to verse 3 because we see how those prayers that cause silence in heaven are mixed with incense. I'm going to read again. The, then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, altar which was before the throne. Now let's focus now. These prayers of the saints, these prayers that cause silence in heaven, are mixed with incense. What is incense? Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, for your notes. The prayers of the saints are like incense unto God. And we see there another angel having a golden censer. You know, that censer is the... Um, that container where you put the hot coals and on top you put the incense that is burning and that was used in worship in the temple and as that smoke was going up that symbolized the, the, the prayer of the saints going up to the father so who is this another angel is not one of the seven angels that brings judgment no another angel is the Lord Jesus. How do we know? Well, we know because Jesus is called the angel of the Lord or the angel of Jehovah. In a few places in the Bible and for your notes, Genesis 16 verse 13, Genesis 31 verses 11 and 13, Judges chapter 6 verse 22, and Hosea 
chapter 12, verse 4. In those verses, we see that Jesus is called the angel of the Lord or the angel of Jehovah. Also, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, we read that Jesus Christ is our great priest, always lives to make intercession for us. Now we see in chapter 3, in, ch in verse 3 here, that the prayers of the tribulation saints, and I want you to focus for a minute, are mixed with the sweet incense of Christ's intercession, and they ascend to the Father through Christ. Through Christ, we have access to the Father, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. So they ascend to the Father. By the time these prayers reach the Father, they are perfect, they are without mistakes, they are pure, they are faultless, unblemished. Why? Because Jesus interceded on their behalf just like today Jesus intercedes for us when we pray now for example many times when I pray when you pray our prayers are mingled with our flesh or we don't know how to pray or we pray according to our will our desires not according to God's will it happens to all of us James writes, you ask, in James chapter 4, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. So when that happens, Jesus intercedes on our behalf. Jesus sweetens our prayer. Jesus goes to the Father, and I give you an example, and he's saying to the Father, Father, this is how Lucia is praying, but what she really needs is something else, Father. Because I know her heart, the motives of her heart, and what she's asking, in fact, is going to weaken her faith. Yeah. But this is what she needs, Father. Thank you, Jesus. He knows our heart. In other words, pay attention. In other words, my clumsy prayers and my awkward prayers are improved, are refined, are upgraded, are enhanced by Christ through his intercessory, intercessory ministry. So don't get, you know, I don't know how to pray. Oh, don't worry about, just pray. Instead of calling all your friends and phoning all your relatives about your problem, just pray. Don't worry, Jesus sweetens your prayers. By the time your prayers reach God the Father, they will be without fault. Because Jesus intercedes for us and he gives us accord, he gives he answers according to his will, not our flesh. You see the difference? The lesson is the same. Pray, pray, pray. My house shall be called the house of prayer, the Lord Jesus said. Now it's time to go to verse 4. Verse 4. We see here that the prayer of the saints. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand, from Jesus' hands. In verse 5, we read, Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth, and there were noisy thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So, the prayers of the saints ascended to the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus, takes the censer, that container in which incense is burned. And I was born in the Orthodox Church and I have that picture of the censer very fresh in my memory. He takes that container and he throws the censer with the flaming coals and incense to the earth, causing judgment, causing loud explosions, thundering lightnings, and an earthquake. We need to remember we are in the time of great tribulation. The Lord is avenging the blood of the saints, the tribulation saints. In other words, the prayers of the tribulation saints, the prayers, they go to the Father and they return to the earth in judgment, in wrath. 
this is the way the seven trumpet judgments are now released and delivered after the seven seal. In verse 6, now we are in the middle of the great tribulation. And we read in verse 6, the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now, the trumpets, the seven trumpets, remember, remember, the judgment has three sets of judgments. Yes, we are done with the seals. And now we start with the trumpets. Later on, we'll talk about bowls. Now we have seven trumpets. These seven trumpets are divided in two groups. The first four, the first four trumpets that we'll talk today in chapter eight, these trumpets affect the environment, the earth and the seas and the fresh water, the, the trees and vegetation. The last three trumpets, trumpets are worse they are later on in chapter 9, and they affect the mankind. They torment the, man, the women, the human beings. They cause severe mental and physical suffering. Now, trumpets in the Old Testament are used in three different ways. I just want you to understand. In the Old Testament, we go in the Old Testament, in Numbers chapter 10, for your notes, uh, we use those, we see that the trumpets were used to gather the people together. Numbers 10, verses 1 through 8. To announce war, Numbers 10, verse 9. Also to announce special times. For example, when the law was given in Exodus 6, 19, when the a king was anointed and enthroned or uh, remember when they conquered Jericho seven trumpets um, when Jesus takes up the bride do you know do you remember when we talk in chapter 4 about the rapture catching away of the saints do you remember first Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, I only meant up to here, with the trumpet of God, we will hear that trumpet. Isn't that beautiful? We will hear the trumpet of God. Now we go back to the book of Revelation. We saw how the trumpets were used in the Old Testament. And now we go to Revelation chapter 8. And we see here that the, the first angel sounded, and we see there a consuming fire, hail coming down blood flowing we see that in verse 7 now it is very possible and I say again I'm not sure it is very possible that these trumpet judgments speak of nuclear exchange it is very possible now history tells us that every weapon or every weapon system that has been developed by humans was being used or will be used. So we know that people will use those nuclear weapons when in the time of great tribulation. Now, when a nuclear warhead is ignited or detonated, we know the big explosion takes place that brings a firestorm winds of fire that will move 250 miles per hour and above, consuming everything in their path. You see, walls of fire are moving and sweeping through big areas of land. And this is what I believe that this trumpet talks about. We don't know for sure. And, and Apostle John in that time, 96, 95 AD, he couldn't write nuclear weapons. He didn't have that in his vocabulary. But this is what uh, we believe. We don't know for sure. God can use his own methods. This is what the way we interpret them. Many scholars interpret that way. Now you may say, what about the hail? Hail. Now, Many of you know that around 1950s, 
In fact, between 1948 and 1958, our country, United States, conducted testing on the island of Bikini, which is in the South Pacific, that belongs to Marshall Islands. And the nuclear explosion during testing caused the water around that little island, the Bikini Island, that nuclear explosion caused the water to go up thousands of feet in the air. Now, water up in the air, in the atmosphere, that water froze and came down as big hail stones destroying everything. Even the equipment they use for that testing, to monitor the testing, was destroyed because of the hail stones. They didn't know about that. You can check that on Google. So what goes up, comes down. Jesus went up, he's going to come down for sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, again, it's, it's possible that this trumpet seek, speak of nuclear war, or as I said, God can judge directly and use his own methods. In verse 8, then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and the third of the living creatures died we see there in verse 9 and the third of the ships were destroyed now we see there's something like a great mountain burning with fire it doesn't really mean it, it was a real mountain something like a mountain now it could be the mushrooming of a nuclear cloud. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably saw picture, pictures with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The, those were baby, baby nuclear, the baby bombs compared to what we have today. You probably saw that mushroom of clouds and, and how big that is. Think about a third of the living creature, a third of the marine life dies and a third of that salt water becomes blood, a third of the sheets were destroyed. Now, we can compare the trump, these trumpet judgments with the plagues in Egypt. There are in Exodus chapter seven through 12, and that's homo. So we can compare these trumpet judgments with the plagues, Exodus chapter seven through 12. Now, we all know that water covers three-fourths of the earth. We all know that. And a third of that is the Atlantic Ocean. Now, also, I read that a third of the sheets afloat, those sheets that are floating in the water, are in the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. Now, it is possible, and I repeat, it is possible, we don't know for sure, it is possible that the second angel brings judgment on that ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. We don't know for sure it is possible. And we go to verse 10. And then we read, then the third angel sounded, and the great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star is Wormwood in verse 11. And the third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Now we see here that God's wrath and God's judgment reaches the fresh water, reaches inland, the rivers, the fountains. Now, there are over three million rivers in the whole world. That includes large rivers and small rivers. If we only think of the large rivers, we only have like 165, like the Amazon, Nile, Mississippi, that's only 165. But we have 3 million wow. in the whole world, large and small. Now in United States, we have 250,000 rivers, large and small. But if we only wanna know the big large rivers, we only have 30, starting with Mississippi River. Now imagine this fallen star. Now this fallen star has to disintegrate because if it doesn't disintegrate, it's gonna destroy the planet Earth. This star falling from heaven will disintegrate and fall into the rivers and a third 
of the water becomes poisonous, becomes bitter. People drink water and they die. So we see these judgments are divinely controlled by the Lord. Now, we talk about that nuclear testing in 1950 in the United States, but I want to remind you about Chernobyl in 1986 when I was alive. In the last year of college there in the city of Cluj. Now, after the testing and of that in 1950s in this country and after Chernobyl, they discover that the water close to the, where that accident was in Chernobyl and on the Bikini Island, the water became poisoned with strontium 90. Strontium 90 uh, is very harmful for human beings. It causes lung cancer, skin cancer, leukemia, uh, bone marrow cancer. Many people in my country die of lung cancer. Even my own daddy, he passed, he had heart issues. He passed away with lung cancer and he never smoked. During the Chernobyl, my iron in my blood went so low that I had to go to the hospital and probably 10 days I was in the hospital for the blood to come up to the normal levels and thank God I recovered. I, I had anemia for many years, but right now, praise the Lord, Amen. all well. So we can see, we can see that um, God can use this nuclear weapons to bring judgment or he can do something else we don't know we just explain we look at the science and we try to make sense of the judgments i don't know for sure i say that again now we go to verse 12 the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So we see here that 33% 30, 33 reduction in the light of the sun, the moon, and the stars. That will affect human beings, and that will affect the food supplies. Now, not us, we are in heaven, remember, the tribulation saints those who are still rejecting Christ in the uh, middle of the tribulation. So also we can say that this reduction uh, can split, speak of nuclear winter. What is nuclear winter? Now scientists tell us that if a nuclear exchange takes place in the summer time, during the summer, not winter, the temperature on the west coast of the United States would be only 15 degrees, one five, 15 degrees in the summer. If a nuclear exchange takes place, after that is a nuclear winter is called by scientists. So as a result, the crops will no, not grow. People will starve to death, to death. Praise the Lord, we are in heaven. Really, these judgments are not easy to teach. But praise the Lord, uh, pretty soon we will be out. Jesus, we got to teach about the second coming in chapter 19. So now we go to the last verse, verse 13. And we see here, I looked and I heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. In other words, the angel is saying, Woe, 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 not wow. Wow, look at those fireworks. No, no. He's saying, Woe, woe, woe. The worst is yet to come, in other words, because the last three trumpets are worse than the first four trumpets. And that will be in chapter 9 next week. Mm -hmm. So we learned today 
the judgment is coming on those who reject Christ. Again, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he shall also reap. Let's pray. Lord, 